Good evening, and welcome back to our second episode of Truth Talk, um, take two, for those of you who don't know. <laughs> so uh, we've always got some kind of technical difficulty going on around here. I can't, couldn't figure out how to wear my mic tonight, and that was the beginning of all things. Um, so we do want to welcome you back. Um, happy, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. I got that out the first time around, so happy Valentine's Day. We will be airing this episode on February 14th. Dad is dressed appropriately for Valentine's Day. I am for myself. No, um, so, um, Lainey, you are too. You kind of well, got the red yeah. maroonish going on, and Jason's got we'll some pink-ish going on over yeah. there, so I am the only person that is kind of dressed in droopy colors, but that's all right. Uh, but happy Valentine's Day. So we're going to spend uh, this season, if it's like last season, we did 20 episodes last season. And um, so we kind of intend to do that this season as well. But um, we're going to spend it in a more intentional manner. Even though last season I felt like was intentional because I felt like we were all going on the where the Holy Spirit led us. Mm -hmm. But it was kind of very, um, you know, we'd figure it out kind of as we went along. We've decided this year to be a little bit more instructional, hopefully. A little and intentional a little with more our intentional, topics, that's right. with our guests. And really allow us to broaden our perspective. What we want this, and I didn't mention this last time, but it just came to me. What we want to be able to do is give enough meat, both to the person seeking, the person who is still in their learning phase, and the mature Christian. You know, we want to be able to make sure that we build the proper foundation, that we have the right relationship both with God and with his church and with his creation. And that no matter where you are in your walk, you are able to gain something, gain some knowledge, gain some insight, some confidence, or just some better understanding, mm -hmm. no matter where you are or what you're bringing to the table as you watch. That's right. Or how you come to this mm -hmm. to this table as you watch. Because we are all in different places. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, as we kind of just comment or as we chime in and as we discuss, I mean. It's all, it's all, that, and that is why God is relational because mm -hmm. it's where you are every time. Right. He mm -hmm. meets you where you are with what you need. Mm -hmm. That's right. So to do that, we felt like the best way we could do that is to start this season by talking about some of the fundamentals of why we believe what we believe. I, I don't want to just say fundamentals of Christian faith or whatever, but it's really just because what does that mean? You know, it means something to, that sounds really kind of, Right. Grand and everything, but like the why foundation. We, that's right. What on is the which foundation? Which everything we believe stands. Because mm -hmm. it does have a foundation, mm -hmm. and right. it, it's all rooted in Scripture. The Christian faith which has order, of, just as God has order. That's right. So, and we intend this, if I understood what and I believe I do, is it, it's to be for anybody. We, we, we're we're trying to build a foundation that we can all come together on. This this is not in, in, intended to be a a Baptist thing or a Methodist right. thing right. or a Presbyterian thing or a Church of God thing. This is is what God intends for us yes. to As understand believers. together. This is what the word of you know the word of God what, says. What it says. Mm -hmm. And and I'm sure there's always things that we're gonna see some different uh, on but but there's these essential core elements yes. that we ought to find That's some right. places that we, we can agree together mm -hmm. on. That's, and that's right. what we're trying to discuss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like the parable of, of, you know, your house being built on the rock or on the sand. Right. There, this, th these are, this is the rock of, of what we believe. Mm -hmm. And so those things are um, God, Scripture, because everything we know about God comes from His Scripture mm -hmm. and the fact that it's divinely inspired and that He is the overall author of the Scripture. Um, salvation, the family, and I think this is where we'll spend a couple of weeks on the family because the family is vitally important to our understanding of who God is because in the beginning, God created a family, right. you know, and we are the family of God, and we are very much um, a family, when you're Christians, a family of believers or, or you 
or you put yourself with family. So that is why I believe Satan attacks families right. so much. And family is being redefined daily mm -hmm. yes. in our culture and in our society. And we need to have a good understanding of when God created the first family, why? Mm -hmm. What were his purposes and what he had envisioned for the family to and be? It, well, that's the traditional bedrock of a society, mm -hmm. a functional society. And if you get away from what the biblical meaning of family is, you see all of the other that is happening That's right. in our world today. And we want to also say, and if you find yourself in that place outside of God's perfect norm, mm -hmm. how, how do I act, how do I function and get back to where, where he, God wants me to right. be? It's not just enough for us to throw a stone out there and each right. and say, bad person. We want to help you find where you are, identify that, and come back to where God wants you to be. And that's what we should that is our purpose for every episode. Right. Is for you to relationally, where are you in 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 regards to God's will for your life is to be able to to establish that and how do you move back? Mm -hmm. And because none of us are perfect. Mm -hmm. right. And hopefully none of us come across as knowing it all and understanding it all and having a grip on it all because we don't. Mm -hmm. You know, all we have is mercy. Mm -hmm you know, and, and grace. gratefulness and <laughs> grace, you know. So we don't ever want that to come across. But but it is important, and I feel like the family and what the family means to God is vitally important for how we are to react as Christians. Also, that leads us into the Christian response and the Christian mm -hmm. responsibility, mm -hmm. you know. So we can't just take all this knowledge and not apply it. And not do something with it. We can't just be hearers. We have to be doers. doers. That's right. Um, and we kind of will probably have a couple of responses because that's multifaceted. Mm -hmm. um, just like the family is multifaceted, so is our response. Because we have different areas of response. We have corporate response. We have individual response. We have local response or community response. And we have global response. So there, that's probably going to be another couple episodes that we really are able to take these things and apply it mm -hmm. in a meaningful way because I think a lot of times Christians want to know um, or, or even people, not just Christians, people want to do something, want to have the correct response, but either by there not being a good way to find that out, people don't know what to do. And sometimes people need more guidance. Mm -hmm. You know, they're willing, but they need more guidance. And there are things that we can do both here locally you know, our and there local are things level. we're already doing that people may not be aware That's of, right. or something that they can be a part of, and and just kind of share that knowledge That's with right. each other. And then um, to round out, this is kind of the first part of our season, and then our our ideal um, is to have a more open dialogue. Maybe you have a few guests join us that have given us some questions before or that has spoken with us about some things they want to address and, and really have an open dialogue regarding some of the things we've discussed and maybe some questions, um, trying to digging in deeper on a, a more personal level. So that's just a quick outline of what to expect between um, our, our first episode, which you've already seen by the time this airs, and our 10th episode. So we hope that gives you an idea of where, where we're moving forward. And um, so let's just talk for a few minutes about why we decided. I mean, I think we addressed it briefly, but I think there's a lot of good things about why we decided that really highlighting these core principles are important starting out. Um, and that's important to, again, wherever you mm -hmm. fall in your um, knowledge of God or your walk with God, why these things are so important. Um, well, I think, you know, the things that we've outlined are really some of the non-negotiables of the Christian faith. I mean, everybody can see in the background, truth talk. Mm -hmm. And we want to share these essential truths uh, because Jesus said in John 8, you'll know the truth mm -hmm. and the truth will set you free. Mm -hmm. um, our world is full of error. Our world is full of falsehood and it's easy for people to get on one bandwagon or the other. Uh, Jesus says Satan is the father of all lies. Mm -hmm. He is the father of deception. Mm -hmm. He has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And we can see that very clearly in the day and age in which we live. 
Um, he has distorted the image of who God is. Mm -hmm. He has distorted uh, what the scripture says, which we hit on that pretty, you know, hard last time. You know, in the beginning, he didn't attack if there was a God. He attacked what God has said. Mm -hmm. um, it's clearly that he is attacking the family, what God has created. And we get in the New Testament with Jesus, and when Jesus talks about the family, he goes back to what was created in the beginning. Yet we got this whole thing in our society today, so that, well, well, that's your family, that's okay, but we're going to have a family like this. And um, there's TV series that have come out in the past, The New Normal and all mm -hmm. this, where, where God only has one normal. And again, it's not that we want to cast stones or we think that we're high and mighty, that we're up here, you're down here. We want people to know the truth and we're sharing this truth in love right. uh, because it's only the truth of the scripture, the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ that is going to set anyone free. So and there, that is one of the reasons there's why. There's so much information out there that if you have questions or if you're seeking uh, answers to spiritual questions is kind of where we're going with this mostly. There is something out there that will justify your own thinking wherever you go. And so I know we've talked about how one of our purposes is to provide truth. Mm -hmm. uh, truth as we know it from Scripture. And so because that's where we've gotten. That's why all of these, if they're not, if they're negotiable, then that means you can make it whatever works for you. Right. Uh, so, you know, it's important that if we're going to call ourselves Christians, that we know that we have certain things that God has called us to mm -hmm. and that he, you know, and expectations that he has just as he gave us Jesus as our model. Mm -hmm. You know, not mm -hmm. to compare ourselves to each other or to the world because we're supposed to be in the world but not of the world. Well, that's the whole thing. We if you set your standard on the world, right? your standard, you yes. started off on the wrong place. Well, it's like you said earlier about the two foundations. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, you know, there's the solid foundation or there's the foundation of building on, you know, sinking sand, basically shifting mm -hmm. sand. And that's what these, these truths are about because if you build on anything else, it's going to eventually start to crumble. Right. And society as we know it is crumbling all around us and there's only you know one solution to that mm -hmm. and it is the truth uh, old country song um, you got to stand for something or you're mm -hmm. gonna fall for anything and yep. these are the things that we like you said earlier there might be a few incidentals we might agree on between different denominations but between these Christians what I call true Christian denomination these ought to be the bedrock on which we do not waver at all and we need to understand too, this is not a new thing. Right. Pilate looked at Jesus and said, what is true? Mm -hmm. And so man has struggled since the fall mm -hmm. with determining truth because that, that's again, we've mentioned, that, that was where Satan aimed at to begin with. Mm -hmm. he, he said, did God really, really say, say that? that? Mm -hmm. And he, his immediate uh, attack was at the truthfulness of God. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's the devil's method you know, always has been to do that. And and what is what is so ironic about that is as we're going to discuss <clears throat> the truth is not hidden. Mm -hmm. The truth wasn't hidden to Eve. She knew the truth. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're going to try to do is take those bare essentials. Mm -hmm. th th those things that are that are non-negotiable that we can look at, and and if you can't accept these, then your your brain, your mind has been darkened, mm -hmm. and you're not going to you're not going to accept the truth. Mm -hmm. That there's some things that must be accepted, mm -hmm. and so we've become so open-minded and so liberal that we've come to the place where because we want everybody to like us, we accept everything. Mm -hmm. And that just can't be. Uh, Jesus said, I am the way, mm -hmm. the truth, and the life. Right. Mm -hmm. No man comes to the Father but by me. And think how, in, you know, he was so inclusive there. He, mm -hmm. he was excluding everything, everything. else. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think 
C.S. Lewis or somebody that said Jesus was either a madman and a liar, mm -hmm. a lunatic, or he's exactly who he says he was. There's no in between. He's either this or that. But that is why the devil has so hard hit making God all these different things, mm -hmm. you know, and giving us this idea of, well, you don't have to have this one idea of who God is. You know, we all believe in this, and I don't want to get too much into next week's episodes, but that is why this is so intrinsically part of the Christian faith mm -hmm. is to, to know who God is and to recognize who he is not. So when you are faced with these things, when you're faced with the people who say, you know, oh, well, God wouldn't do this or God wouldn't do that, so that you'd recognize that that is not truth. Mm -hmm. right. You know, that that is not, that is not what God is. And that is not, sometimes it's easier to train yourself to recognize what God is not, mm -hmm. you know, and to teach yourself to recognize what he is not. Having now preached for 40 years and not demeaning anybody in the church, it is amazing to me to see how shallow the knowledge of God or the Bible is to many of our people that mm -hmm. sit in the church. It is, it's just amazing to me to see how little we know. And many of our folks having sat in the pew and been in Sunday school year after year, but how much knowledge has not been retained. Mm -hmm. it's, it's funny, but you, I've listened to, um, to say, I, like all of y'all, I listen to different podcasts, you know, and everything. And I was listening to something this week, and I can't remember if it was Southern Baptist uh, preacher talking about, and and, and um, I know somebody shared something on Facebook that I read, and they said that, and it stepped on his, I, I always, you, you said this a long time ago, and he said he stepped on his toes when he started, when the Lord started dealing with him, and, you know, God never aims for your toes, he aims for your heart. Mm -hmm. And, but he said that we have so many years focused on um, recruitment that we didn't focus on, um, you know, discipleship, I guess. Right. I, I don't like to right. use Christianese when we're doing these because you never know who's mm -hmm. one. But we have not. We, we, for so long, focused on, you know, getting as many people We sent the people to, to, to kindergarten the and left them there. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that we didn't we, build them up. We didn't, we, we didn't invest anything mm -hmm. into them, into their knowledge, into we their We just got stuck spiritually. in this, um, this, this set time that we have Sunday school this time. We have church. We have church training or whatever you call it, you know, on Sunday nights, if, if you have that. I, I grew up going to a church where we had church training on Sunday night. Um, but, like, there's many churches who, who don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and then on Wednesday night, you have, if you're older, you have prayer meeting. Um, and if you're younger, then you have some, like, I grew up doing GAs and RAs missions, and stuff right. like that or, or some sort of mm -hmm. missions. And, you know, but, but at what point are you really... Are you doing Routine it out of habit? Are you That's doing right. it out of a call that God has placed on your life to grow in your faith, to grow closer to Him, to know more about Him and the things that He has called us to That's right. each and every day? I say all the time, I wish that I was interested in Bible study in my 20s as I am in my 40s. Mm -hmm. You know, because, man... Man, I, I well, you know, and I tell Marshall that all the time. Um, you know, telling him that I wish when I was younger, um, you know, not that I didn't have people pouring into my life, but that somebody had made me be more habitual about my Bible study mm -hmm. to not just do it out of habit or out of obligation, but that when I was younger, had I had a more set routine or had I had somebody, you know, encouraging me to to do these things, so that when I got older they would be more natural mm -hmm. and I, and then I would have a better understanding of, oh, well, now I know why. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I try to say this is why, because <coughs> when you do it now, it will just become part of your life mm -hmm. and you'll continue to and grow. And there's all these tools now right. to where if you want to learn about, like, if we know that we're prepping for, you know, scripture um, coming up on February 28th, we can go to all these different tool sources now commentaries commentaries and, and like all these study bibles you got <laughs> like logos and what's that other one um well blue letter bible is like mm -hmm. the easiest thing out there that's kind of open to anything that requires no money 
you know, and that you can do a lot of, of research and in-depth and it's all out there. And we, and I think we talked about it last week is that there's so much knowledge out there, yet we are still so illiterate mm -hmm. when it comes to, we're, we're knowledge rich, but understanding poor. Right. There, there's no excuse mm -hmm. for those who Want. are believers and wanting to grow and to be intimate with the Lord. Um, to be the person he wants them to be. I mean, you look in scripture, there was a lot of people who truly believed in Jesus. Mm -hmm. But there was only 12 that were intimate mm -hmm. to that extent they were with him. When he said, follow me, they dropped everything mm -hmm. and followed him. But even out of the 12, there was three when it was time to get really, really, really intimate. And that's not just, you know, cast stones at the other, the other um, nine that wasn't or the other multitudes that believed. I think it was something in them Jesus saw. These are the real deal who want to follow me. And I've often heard, and I believe uh, uh, some of us here may remember Miss Jenny Heyman mm -hmm. always used to say, you can be as close to Jesus as if you want to be. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's up to you. Yep. Right. And uh, I, she just always, you know, that was one of her little sayings always, or you can be as close to the Lord as you want to be. And we, can see, that. Some, we can see that in the Bible. There's so many distractions in, in, out there now that... Uh, and we give in to those distractions. That, that's our fleshly desire. Mm -hmm. And so we choose to be distracted by all the things that are there. And, and I'm not saying all of those things are bad. And, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying you shouldn't have some time of distraction. But when that dis period of distraction becomes over-consuming, all-consuming, then that is an idol and evil for you. Mm -hmm. And many folks spend all that time feeding their flesh and no time in scripture and wonder why things go the way they go. Mm -hmm. well, and, and that's the yeah, problem. There's that um, meme, I see it on Facebook all the time saying, um, if you're overwhelmed with the world, then you're, you're probably too involved with the world and not involved mm -hmm. enough with God. I mean, that's not exactly how it goes. It's worded much better than that. But that's bas basically the gist of it is, when you're wrapped up and involved in the world, you are not going to be wrapped up and involved with God the way you should. It's and it's very simple to find out. Mm -hmm. Whatever you think it might be, do away with it for a little while. If you think uh, that Facebook and social media might be your problem, just make a pact with God and say for a week, mm -hmm. I'm not going to watch social media. And if during that week you lust after that thing, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Or if television, watching just... Just programs, not bad programs, mm -hmm. so I can't think of many good programs, but bad programs mm -hmm. on uh, television. I mean, Jeopardy, <laughs> topic, right? Jeopardy, okay. Will of Game Fortune, Show Network. Game Show, uh, con <laughs> uh, Classic Concentration, you know, um, uh, Hometown, the programs, Andy Griffin. Yeah, the programs we watch. You know, but, but if you're spending your time watching that and not studying, turn it off. Mm -hmm. Turn it off. And if, if, if you're consumed with thinking about, boy, Andy Griffith somewhere. I could be watching Andy Griffith right now. You have a problem. Mm -hmm. you, you can figure these things out pretty good. The uh, problem I, comes with when you figure it out and then you're called to re a response to that and people don't want to necessarily be made uncomfortable and placed in that situation. And they start justifying it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and this gives me a whole idea for another topic that I'm adding to our schedule right now. <laughs> Discipline. Mm -hmm. I mean, spiritual we discipline. live in an undisciplined society, whether it's spiritual, you know, whatever. We live in an undisciplined society. Mm -hmm. But if you cannot discipline yourself to abstain from certain mm -hmm. things or either you know, study or make, set a time for it. Has Mandy been watching us while we've been doing our <laughs> diet this week? I, feel like I, have. I have not because I would probably be, just, I would be like very convicted if I was. I talk about all the time how I am like so undisciplined and I have no... Will, like, willpower. I, I decided to fast coffee for uh, two weeks at one time, just not to have coffee, and uh, and so. Uh, but not your diet, sun kissed. Uh, no. I'm going to meddle. I'm sorry. I went to meddle. Yeah, going to meddle. And so, um, so, uh, and uh, so, I did not have coffee for uh, two weeks. Was this at, recently? No, this was several okay. years ago. Now. I'm sorry. And I'm um, being that grumpy recently. So. Um, so uh, at the end of the, the two weeks, uh, thinking about it and praying about it, uh, I, I made the confession that the day 
I desired God as much as I desired having that cup of coffee at the end of two weeks is the day that you would draw close to God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what fasting, that's what those mm-hmm. things yes. do, yeah. is if you will use them, mm-hmm. they, they teach you of where you stand in your spiritual maturity. And evidently, I stood pretty low on the totem pole. And so uh, th- th- those are the things you need to do, though, to find out if you're going to grow, if you're going to come to any spiritual maturity. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. what we're doing. And so I know it seems like we're far afield here, but really we're talking about those, those things. things that are going to mm-hmm. make you grow. Grow. Those things that are going to draw yeah. you closer mm-hmm. to the Lord because you have grown in your knowledge and grow your understanding. Grow you, going to stretch you, going to conform you. So, but if you don't do these fundamental things, if you don't believe these basic things, you'll never get to any of that. Mm-hmm. And you have to, and I think this is where good discipline comes in, you have to look at them at some point. Mm-hmm. And you have to understand what the basis is and how that fits into your life mm-hmm. at some point. Because if you don't, it, you're navigating water without a compass. Well, and these you things know. are essential to what you do with Jesus. That's right. You know, and we've talked about that a lot, about what, you know, Jason says it a lot when he is uh, preaching funerals, is what happens when you leave this earth has to do with what you did with Jesus mm-hmm. while you were here. Yeah. And these things all mm-hmm. tie into uh, what you do with Jesus is all connected to mm-hmm your belief and your understanding of these fundamental elements. And, and if you're ever going to learn these fundamentals, all of these fundamentals, you know, you find them here, there, and everywhere, they are found in your Bible. Yes. Mm-hmm. There's nothing confusing. As, uh, Dad and I were talking earlier today, and we were talking about some of these things. Um, one, one of the things we haven't done well, and we'll, we probably will talk about this some when we get the Scripture portion, is not understanding um, the history that surrounds um, the Bible and biblical times. And I hate to say Christian history because then you get very narrow-minded kind of about some things um, because I don't think anybody would understand would ever think that, you know, Alexander the Great is Christian history. Yet, But he was. But he, he was. was. Mm-hmm. I mean, he is tore up in the Old Testament. You know, the Old Testament has Alexander the Great all through it if you know where it applies. Mm-hmm. You know, and... Um, so, we, we wouldn't have the New Testament without Alexander the Great mm-hmm. because he spread the Greek language throughout the world that Paul was going to walk. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. I mean, it's fundamental to the, to the New Testament that's is exactly the Greek right. language, and that's Alexander the Great's work. Amazing yeah. how God just... Mm-hmm. Well, in Scripture, all, all throughout Scripture, there are social implications that are going on in the background, mm-hmm. and we're seeing the Scripture side of it and the spiritual side of it of what's going on with the believers of that time, mm-hmm. while they're still experiencing all these other mm-hmm. social concepts, right. um, you know, and struggles. And I was fortunate enough that, you know, my parents sacrificed so that I could attend um, Christian school. Um, but, and, and we had a book, and that I, st- I still have a copy of it, and sometimes I, I'll go back to it looking something up, but it was um, the history of the world through Christian perspective. And that is, you know, some people like, I was like, well, how do you know that? I was like, well, you know, I, that's how I learned. Mm-hmm. But teaching Sunday school for as many years as I've taught Sunday school, the vast majority of believers don't understand Christianity, this Bible, from a secular viewpoint mm-hmm. so that they understand how it is. It's like a, sec- it's like it a second is. world. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and I but think we say it all the time, But it's, it's in like this world tale. that we've, mm-hmm. we've had. We yeah. treat our Bible like a fairy Since tale. Since civilization's been established for time. six, seven thousand years yeah, ago. I, I, I use the illustration in a sermon here. We think of the Bible and Christianity and the Old Testament like it was Narnia mm-hmm. or Middle Earth or something like that. And it's not. It, it, it runs parallel with the history of the world. Mm-hmm. And so um, I'm going to share something, Dale. I'm sorry. Daddy was preaching a couple of Sundays ago, and poor, our poor he was talking producer. about he was talking about uh, Lord of the Rings, and Daddy was talking about Bilbo and all this kind of stuff. And, and Dale's like, I had no idea he saw these movies. And I was like, Well, it's a book. And Daddy read the book, not <laughs> saw the movies. You know, so which we may have watched the movies. Which at some are great point. books, great movies. By the way. <laughs> but yeah. but you know, that's kind of like these. That's how we treat the Bible sometimes, though, as it's this very rich other piece fantasy of literature, world, fantasy world. Yeah. You know, and it's not. And so one thing I would I, I would say to people who are interested 
you need to invest in a good study Bible that has notes, has other commentary, commentary that points to other commentary. Um, they're not cheap. A good study Bible is going to cost you $50 plus, plus mm -hmm. you know, uh, a really good one is going to be more towards the $100, mm -hmm. but it, you will be better off from getting a good study Bible mm -hmm. and being able to read some of these crossovers. Um, I would bet most folks cable subscription per month is more than a hundred bucks. That's right. Mm -hmm. And um, so where I, are you want to invest? This is a one-time investment yeah. that, well, that will pay, pay off, off richly. Yeah. And I'll, I'll just give an example. So we've been studying Daniel for um, a long time now. I can't remember. And, um, and, and the way dad does his teaching when he starts a book like that, I mean, we just go, chapter by chapter, sentence by sentence, or verse by verse, and we go through it. But I was reading and a couple of weeks ago, in my, in, and I have a, a women's study Bible, and we were in Daniel chapter 7, and we're talking about, we've kind of gotten to like the end times portions, and Daniel seeing the vision of what's to come, which can be very confusing and everything. But this simple, it, it, I, I love how applicable the study Bible is. It says, while Christians have an interest in ascertaining the meanings of these prophecies, the believer's faith is not dependent on knowing the precise events that will take place as human history moves toward its conclusion. Rather, faith is based on a personal relationship with the Lord of history, and that relationship requires faithfulness and obedience now just as it did in Daniel's day. Mm -hmm. It's a super easy way to say, God used a, a chapter or two to say, don't worry about it. Let me show you what's going to happen, but you're not to worry about this now. Mm -hmm. You are to focus on today, but I'm going to give you a glimpse. Mm -hmm. But the commentary was able to say, this is interesting. Read it for knowledge, mm -hmm. but don't worry about don't it. Not understand right. it. Yeah. And there are things in the Word you're going to find out as you grow. You don't understand. You can't comprehend, but you take it in faith and trust. That's right. That's the way it's going to be. That's right. So, so, so one thing I would suggest, if you're interested in learning more, you've got to get you a good study Bible and a good commentary. I struggle finding commentary. I, I probably lean on Blue Letter Bible more than anything just because Dad does. We bought a couple of different commentary programs over the years that have been difficult to manage. They're not easy to, um, I don't know why the if Christian, they use the scholarly mm -hmm. uh, language and, and, and you know, it, it is sometimes you're going to have, you're going to have to have a dictionary set beside of you to explain some of the words that they're going to mm -hmm. use just, just to, you know, uh, get so, and that's tough when, when you're mm -hmm. doing that. So. There are some good things, that, there are some good tools out there that you can pay for, though. Mm -hmm. um, if you're looking for more classical training on that type of thing. And we'll try to uh, do a little research and throw some of that, that information out, out there as we too, go yeah. along. Mm -hmm. uh, BLB.org is definitely a, a, a beginner site. Blue Letter uh, Bible. Yeah, yep. yeah, but if you go BLB.org, I think you'll get it yeah. easily. And uh, that's Blue Letter Bible. Mm -hmm. And it's a good beginner place. It's a good start. Gateway. Uh, BibleGateway.org, I think it is. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure if it's .org or not. But Bible Gateway is. is another good one. Uh, there's, there's and then there's some more of the expensive ones there. Logos, that if you can spend logos, the time. Logos. I could never figure it out. But well, I mean, you have to take a training course. That, that's the biggest thing. When we realized once you bought the subscription that you needed to take the training course yes. to learn it. And you we were like, we're out. The, you probably need to take the training course more than once because there, there's... There's so much there. Mm -hmm. I still own you it. Can't I just comprehend. You really don't. If you really buy that, you don't need Anything nothing else. else. Yeah. I mean, I, well, I won't say that, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. there's just so much there. And, yeah. But it is confusing. Yeah. yeah. So we say all that as we as we kind of close out this overview is to say, we're learning too. Mm -hmm. Right. We never <laughs> quit. Learning. Never quit right. learning. Join us as we learn this season. Because I think that if the Lord uses us um, like he's, he's leading us to believe he's going to use us, we're going to learn so much for, about him and about us and about who we are as, the, as a fellowship of believers and what we can do. I believe, you know, there's a time and a place for everything. Mm -hmm. and, and God sets things in motion that you don't understand and that, that, it's not, maybe not for us to understand. All we are is to be obedient right. to what he has called us to do. And, and 
be open to be being used by God. Mm -hmm. um, we always want to encourage people that if they have questions to send us those questions, um, especially as we start getting into this next right. week. So we'll start um, with God, God, who God is. Um, again, like we said, who God is not. Um, you have to really understand God and who he is to understand the rest. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean it's going to make sense to us because we don't have omniscience right. and we don't have the knowledge of his heavenly plan, like his everlasting mm -hmm. plan. You know, we have an idea I and mean, we know we know how it's going to kind of from scripture, we can see where it's going and but we don't know his mind. Mm -hmm. Um, we know his heart. His thoughts are not our thoughts. That's right. His, his ways, ways are not our are ways. Are not our ways. But we do have his reveal, what he's revealed Absolutely. to himself. That's, right. and that's what we can talk mm -hmm. about. I mean, and the, that's what we the, need to talk the, about. You know, there are depths that we'll never get to. Mm -hmm. Yet, he still reveals himself to Constantly. where anybody can understand. Have a relationship with Who he him. is, mm -hmm. what his purpose is, and what his will is for your life. Yep. It's, it's, he is unknown, but completely known, yes. you know, and so it's, it's amazing. I think to, Spurgeon said the, the scriptures are shallow enough, a child can play in it and not mm -hmm. drown, but so deep the greatest theologian can never touch its depths. That's right. And, and, and that, is, that is what we want to start playing in. You know, so that we know. I'll be in the shallow end. That's right. <laughs> we, well, that's what I mean, the shallow end. Um, <laughs> we'll be there with you. But we want to stretch. Um, we want to de deepen our knowledge as well as, you know, encouraging people to join us and deepen their knowledge as well. So we hope that, that you find this season encouraging, that you see. I'll just quickly go over um, the topics that we'll be going from here. So next week we'll talk about God. Uh, upcoming, we have scripture and salvation, the family, the Christian response, and our responsibility, um, have both locally and globally, um, discipline, um, also um, talking about, you know, answering those questions that you have. So we want questions. We want to hear from you. What do you want to hear? What do you want to know? Um, people typically will ask us things here and there, but we really want to encourage you to send those questions to abcworth1 at gmail.com if you have them. No questions too simple nope. because really the most mind-blowing things come from simple sounding questions and you have to step back and think of them from another person's perspective and that's when you start peeling back those layers and understanding more and more. So send us those questions. We covet them at abcworth1 at gmail.com so that we can really get to the heart of some of these matters. We thank you for joining us tonight. We look forward to next, uh, next week's mm -hmm. discussion on God. Thank you.